Welcome to Unit 4, Working with Events. So what exactly are events? Well, basically, events are everything that happens on your web page. It's a combination of things that the user may do, as well as things that the page does itself while it's loading. So for example, if I click on something or even mouse over something, that is actually an event. If I type something into a form field, that's also an event. And finally, if I change a form field, if I modify it, if I submit a form, that's also an event. And jQuery also, on top of this, adds a few special events as well. So, how does jQuery handle events? Well, the basic form is going to be selector.event. Now, once again, everything starts with the selector. And in this case, dot event is not actually what you type, but it'd be the event you care about. So for example, dot click, dot mouse over, etc. Now, jQuery will run a function that you specify and pass a few things there that you may want to work with. Specifically, it passes an event object. Now, we don't normally care about the event object. We just care that the event happened. But if you want to look at that event object, you can. It's passed a target, which is what you actually did the, uh, the action on. So if it was a click, it'd be what you clicked on. If it was mouse over, it'd be what the mouse went over. It also sets the this value equal to that as well. So for example, if I'm saying on any paragraph, when you click, I want you to run a particular function, both target and this will represent the particular paragraph that the event was fired upon. Now there's one more way of doing this as well, selector.on, and we'll talk about why you would use that later on. So here's a very simple example. I have a paragraph that has an ID of intro, and I'm saying when the person clicks on it, here is the code that I want you to run. In this case, all I have is a simple console.log. Here's another example. I have an input with an ID of name, and I've said when that value changes, I want you to run a function. Notice how I use this, and I pass it to the dollar sign, essentially pass it to jQuery. Why am I doing that? Well, in this case, this represents the actual DOM item for that input field. Now, I want to use jQuery on that DOM item so it's easier to use. So by passing it into dollar sign, I'm essentially saying, jQuery, wrap this DOM thing so I could use it the easier way. So how about some examples? So here's my first example. It has a paragraph and it has an input field. Below it, I have my code, and this is pretty much exactly what you just saw on the slide. When I click on that paragraph, I want to log something, and when I change that form field, I want to do something as well. Let's look at this in the browser. Okay, here is my page, and I'm going to click on that paragraph, and boom, it's working. I'm going to change this form field to foo, and as soon as I did, notice how it logged. If I change it to foo moo, it's going to log again. Now, change is smart enough to recognize that if I don't change it, it shouldn't fire. So if I erase this and type foo moo again, notice nothing happens. I have to actually change it to a new value for something to happen. Let's look at another example. In this page, I have multiple paragraphs. And now I want to say, if you click on any of them, I want you to fire a function. Now, how do I know which one was actually clicked? In this case, I could use e.target or this. You can see that example is kind of commented out on line 23. Because I have access to it, and because I could pass it to jQuery, as I do in line 21, I can then do jQuery type things on it. So for example, I could run .text to get the text for that particular paragraph. So essentially, what this is going to do is say, if I click on any paragraph, tell me the text of the paragraph that I just clicked on. Let's look at this in the browser. Okay, here's my web page. Here are those three paragraphs, and as I click, you can see it's firing the click handler, 
and it's firing the same one for each of them. But again, because I have access to what I clicked on, I can specifically look at the text for that paragraph that I actually used. Let's look at one more example. So this example is based on the one that we saw earlier when we were talking about manipulating the DOM. I've simplified it a little bit to make it easier and you could see in the commented out parts what the old code looked like. If you remember, I said, we typically don't do on-click event handlers like that, and now you know why. jQuery makes it a bit easier to set up those handlers, and we don't have to modify our HTML. Look how this HTML is somewhat simpler than the version above. I'm still doing the same thing, but my code is a bit cleaner. There's my dot .click to run the prepend, and there's my dot .click to run the append. Now, something interesting is going to happen when we run this. Let's take a look. Here is my web page, and let's click on that prepend and see what happens. Wow, I'm not sure if you saw that. Let's do that a few more times, just so you can be sure to see it. What's happening is that when I click, my jQuery code ran. I did see my text show up momentarily, but then the entire page reloaded. Well, why is that? Let's go back to the code. What we have said here is that on a click event, I want jQuery to, to run this code for me. But remember, a link means something. When you click on a link, it means I want to go someplace. Now, in this case, I have a blank href, and the browser says, well, obviously, you want to go to the same page you're on now. So when I clicked, my code ran, and the normal browser behavior also ran. And that normal browser behavior was to go to a URL. So how can we fix this? Well, we have a couple of different options. Remember that the callback function for events is passed an event object. In that event object, I can do a couple of things. One of those is to prevent default. And it does pretty much exactly what you would imagine. So all I'm saying in line 36 is, you know what? I don't want the normal click thing to happen. Just stop and then, you know what? Let me do whatever I want. There's an alternative to that as well, return false. And you'll see an example of why you would use that a bit later. Let's run this and see what happens. Okay, looks the exact same. But now when I click my links, because I've stopped the default action, I don't actually leave to reload that URL. And we'll do the append just to be sure. And it worked. Let's look at one more version of this. So this is the exact same code. The only thing I did different here was to switch from the shorthand method for click and go to the on method. You could think of the click method as being kind of, you know, again, a, a shorthand, whereas on is the more abstract, powerful version. One of the reasons you may use on is that you can actually specify multiple events at once. So I can do click, mouse over, mouse enter, etc. I combine all of those to one particular function at one time. And again, later on, you'll see even more reasons why dot on is powerful. If we run this, we'll see the exact same thing. So I'll skip showing you that. So what about forms? You've already seen an example of change but jQuery supports other things as well within forms. One of them is blur. That will fire every time you actually leave a field. So if you've clicked into it and then click someplace else, there's also a focus event, which represents when you do click into a particular form field. And finally, there's also a submit handler, which for a form says, this is what I want you to do when you actually submit that form. Now, what's nice is that you can actually block that form from going forward and do something or allow it to go forward and actually post to your server. Let's look at an example of this. Okay, so I have a couple of things going on here. Let's tackle it line by line. Between 13 and 17, I essentially just have my form. You can see three fields there, a name field, an email field, and a submit button. In my code, I've added a couple of event handlers just to show you different things that you could do. The first one I have is just on the blur for the name field. And once we switch to the browser, you'll see how that fires as I click in and out of that particular field. 
Now, an interesting thing about the focus event is that if I don't have a callback handler, it actually fires a focus event. So if you ever wondered if there was a simple way of saying when the page loads, I want to focus on a particular field so you can just start typing, that's one way of doing it. HTML5 also has a simple way of doing it in the tag itself. And finally, I'm saying when I submit my form, I want to look at it. Notice that at the end of that submit handler, I have a return false. That will prevent the form from actually submitting. Let's take a look at this in the browser. So here's my form. Notice immediately that the focus event fired on that name field and focused the form. I could start typing immediately. Now, if I click away from that, we'll see the blur. So basically the blur happens when I leave that field. I can start changing stuff, etc. And when I submit, and let me do a proper email field here. When I submit, that form submit handler fired and logged those values. And if I change them, I could see them change in the console. Now, as you could probably guess, this is where form validation is going to come in later. So how about some more events just for fun? There is a hover event. Essentially, it's a shorthand for mouse enter and mouse leave. And it looks just like that. I give it a selector, I say dot hover, and then I pass in the function that I want to run when the mouse goes over, and then the function that I want to run when the mouse leaves. Another example is one. As you can probably guess, it listens for an event but just one time. So how about some demos? So for our first example, let's look at the hover event. I have a couple of paragraphs again, and then for each of them, I'm saying I want to listen for the hover event. So remember, the first argument is the function to run when I actually mouse over. The second one is the function to run when I mouse out. So if I run this in my browser, I'll see something when I put the cursor over it and when I take the cursor out of it. Let's look at this and see how it works. All right, here's the web page. Now, as I bring my mouse up to that bottom paragraph, there's the over event and there's the out event. And if I go crazy up and down, up and down, you can see multiple hover events as I go into one paragraph and leave it and then go into the other one as well. Now let's look at the one event. Again, this will essentially create an event listener that only runs one time. So all I've said here is that I want to listen for the click event for the paragraph one time and the change event for the field one time. Let's take a look at this in the browser. Okay, here's our page. And I'll click on the paragraph, and there's the console.log message. Let's do it again, and nothing shows up. Let's type in here and change that name, and there we go. And let's change it again, and nothing happens. So you've seen how you can actually listen to events. What about removing events? You may want to stop you know, responding to particular events on your page. Well, luckily, there's a very simple way to do it dot off. It's the exact opposite of dot on. It turns off any event handler and can actually remove some or all of the event handlers. So far you've seen examples where I attach one particular handler for an event. You're allowed to attach as many as you want. So when you remove them you could specify whether you want to remove one or multiple from that. Let's look at an example. So here's my sample page. I have a paragraph with an idea of intro, and I want to both enable and disable a click handler for that. So what I did is I had two buttons, one to turn on the event handler and one to turn off. Look at the code below it. Now what I've done is I've taken my, my event handler, I've taken it out of the function, and I've just put it in the page as is. Function click handler, console.log, you clicked me. So the enable button on click is going to turn on the event handler by just saying dot on click and I specify the actual function that I'm using. 
To turn that off, it's just a matter of switching from dot on to dot off, and I specify the handler that I want removed. And that's all it really takes. Let's look at this in the browser. All right, here's my page. Now, again, I'm not listening for click events by default. So if I click, nothing happens. So let's enable it. And now when I click, ta-da. And to turn it off, I will click to disable and it is gone. We don't see new console.log messages showing up. It's as simple as that. So now we get to the most special event, the most important event in jQuery DOM, the thing that you will use probably in every single web page going forward that makes use of jQuery. And that is the ready event. It's used with the document object and it represents that the page is done loading. Let's look at an example of that. Dollar sign document dot ready. That's all it is. So it looks a lot like our other event handlers. Notice though that I'm not doing quote document quote. I'm actually passing the document object. And what this represents is essentially that the page is done. The DOM has been loaded. Doesn't mean that every particular part of the page is done. So for example, images may still be loading but the image in the DOM itself is actually there and can be interacted with. So let's look at some examples to figure out why we would use this. So what I have here is a very simple click handler. On line 14, I have my paragraph and then below it, I have my script. So when I click, it's gonna work. Let's run this just to be sure, I could be wrong. Okay, here's the page, and if I click, yay, it's working. Okay, let's go back to our code. Now here's one more example where all I've done is switch the order. It shouldn't matter, right? My code says, hey, find this particular paragraph, and when you click, you know, run that log message, and there's my paragraph. We should be great. Let's run this and see what happens. Okay, here's the web page, and I will click. And, oh no, it's not working. Let's go back to the code and try to figure out why. Well, the reason that this failed is that when the browser came in, it ran this code immediately. It stopped and said, okay, you know what? Let's find that paragraph tag. And when you click on it, this is what you'll do. But at this time, the paragraph tag wasn't actually there. The browser didn't know about it yet. It didn't know that it even existed. So this selector essentially returned nothing. Now jQuery won't throw an error on that. It pretty much assumes you know what you're doing. And in this case, we messed up. So let's fix it. So here's a new version of the code. I've also moved the script up into my head block to make it a bit cleaner. And now I'm using document.ready. Now what this means is jQuery will, will see this and say, you know what, when you're done loading the page, then proceed and run this function. So now the exact same code that, you know, find the ID of a para and assign this click handler to it, this is going to start working now. Let's go back into our browser and test it out. Okay, there's that click me and let's see if it works. And yay, it works, of course it did. I didn't doubt it for a minute. But as you can see, using document ready is very, very important. You know what? That's why most jQuery examples you see out there make use of document ready. 